Hi there. Today I'm going to show you the collaborative editing feature, otherwise known as project sharing, in DaVinci Resolve 14. I'm going to go to DaVinci Resolve where I have my two local databases and I've also created a shared database. You can create one by clicking New Database, then click Create, choose uh, PostgreSQL, and go ahead and uh, give it a name. Of course, you need to have a uh, username and password. Then click Create. I've already uh, got one here, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and just open it up. And you can see right there, there's an icon that shows that this is a collaborative project. Uh, so there's my project timeline. And I can just click around and go from bin to bin, open up uh, whichever sequence I wish to work on. Meanwhile, another user can connect to the same shared database. They can open the same shared project. You can see that their amber icon has shown up right at the top of my project. They are now in the project, and as they move from bin to bin, their colored user icon indicates which bin they currently have open and uh, therefore control of. Conversely, if I move from bin to bin, uh, I can see an icon that represents me as a user. So I'm in cut for bin. And let's just say the user 2 decides she wants to work on cut for. She can go into the cut for bin, open up the sequence, but she cannot make any editorial changes. She can't move or trim clips because the blue user has control of the bin. That's me. Uh, there's a built-in chat client, so any user can go ahead and click that icon and message the rest of the users. And then they send me a message. And then of course uh, I see that there's a message waiting for me by the red icon, so if I click that I can go ahead and read any messages that have been sent and send my replies as well, all without getting up from my chair. I can rename my username from the default, uh, any user can. So I can change it to Steve, and when the other users check their messages, they're going to see that my username is now Steve. So while I can go ahead and make editorial changes, say uh, working on this clip, I'll just make it a little bit shorter, the other editors will see an icon that tells them that somewhere in the sequence something has changed. By clicking that icon, it refreshes the sequence to reveal the change that has been made. You'll notice if I zoom in on the other user sequence, it shows the gap. Uh, now I'll go ahead and trim that gap back to where it was and hit save. And then again, the other users see that a refresh is necessary, and when they click that button, the clip returns to its previous state that it was in when I saved my project to the database. So only one user can edit a sequence at a time, which is what you want. But while other users cannot make editorial changes on the edit page, on the color page, an unlimited number of users can actually make changes to the shots. Okay, so I'll just make a couple of really quick changes. Uh, maybe uh, darken up the shadows a little bit. Have a little bit more of a high contrast uh, shot of this gun. As you know, we have a, a problem with guns in this country. Uh, they're not really lit well enough, so you have to do a lot of uh, color grading after the fact. So there's my shot before and after. And of course, I can click that button to toggle the view. Now, the editing editor won't really see any kind of indication that uh, there's been any kind of color grading change on the edit page. But on the color page, there is an icon on the shot showing the color of the user that is currently grading that shot. Now, it's not going to update until that user clicks off that shot and goes to another clip. Now on my timeline, that clip gets the orange icon, whereas the clip that needs to be updated gets a gray refresh arrow, which I can click to update my timeline to show the most recent color grade. 
Now I can scrub through the shot and uh, see the color grade in my timeline. I can even make my own changes on the color page. All I have to do is select the clip and start making changes. So while there's bin level locking for project editing, here on the color page it's clip by clip level locking. Virtually an unlimited number of colorists could be working on the same timeline as another editor. So now when I click off my shot, uh, other editors will get a refresh icon on their color page showing that my changes have now been applied to their timelines. Now, should another editor wish to work on the editorial aspects of the project, they can simply ask me to step out of the bin. So I'll just uh, switch to a different sequence and a different bin. Uh, now another user can go into that uh, bin and take control of the bin and the sequence. Uh, notice, uh, say that user moves the clip up a couple tracks, then on uh, my timeline I'm going to see after I refresh that that clip has been moved up a couple tracks. But of course I can't make any changes myself. Alright, so I'll just go ahead and hit undo there. So any editors working in the sequence will see a refresh icon in their monitor whereas editors that are working in other bins will see a refresh icon to the right of the bin. In either case, clicking the refresh icon refreshes everyone to the same version of the edited sequence. Now at the heart of collaborative editing is uh, this feature, which is part of the Resolve 14 release. Uh, it's a setting that's on by default. It's called Live Save. With Live Save, every time an editor performs an action, it is automatically saved to the database. By sharing a database, the editors can essentially share a project. When they need to refresh their version of the project to the shared one on the database, they just have an icon to click. And that, in a nutshell, is collaboration in DaVinci Resolve 14. I have to say, as a longtime uh, Avid editor, I'm really excited to see how this implementation fares in a real-world scenario uh, with, uh, you know, real-world editors. So thanks for watching. I'm Steve, and you can get uh, more tips, tricks, and assorted sundries at my website, www.editdog.com. Thanks for watching.